So your family has just gotten out of church on Sunday, and you decide you're going to go down the road to a restaurant that you can walk during the service. It's in a part of town you've never been before, so you drive over that way, and as you're going towards the street that the restaurant is on, you start noticing some of the houses are a little bit let go, high grass, there's some chain link fence, there's children playing in the streets wearing messy clothes. A little further down the street, you start encountering neighborhoods with a lot of Hispanic individuals all standing on the corners um, talking Spanish, which you don't understand. And then you see the restaurant. You look at your family and you decide we're not going to eat here. So you head back towards the side of town you're comfortable with. You go into a well-known family restaurant. And while you're waiting to be seated, a gentleman begins striking up a conversation with a younger woman there. She doesn't seem to be interested in talking with him, so everybody seems cautiously watching their exchange. So, all within just one trip for lunch after church, you've discriminated on someone based on their social class, you've discriminated on them based on their ethnicity, and you've discriminated based on their gender. So, in watching this video, I want everyone here to unconscious to know that unconsciously and consciously we all judge. Uh, in this speech, we're going to cover a lot of techniques that will help us make be more conscientious of our judgment. As for my credentials, my name is Laurel Dangro. I'm a Christian and I'm a student here at Liberty University. I study psychology full time, so um, I'm able to give a couple techniques through my psychology books to help. Uh, not discriminate. Um, discrimination is um, something very common for all people, and it can be based on social class, ethnicity, or gender. None of this promotes God's values. With scripture and changing our thought processes, discrimination can be remedied to help individuals love how God intended. So in this speech, we're going to identify a couple different types of discrimination, being social class, um, ethnicity, and gender. First, we're going to talk about some scripture that goes along with each one, and then we're going to move into techniques to act in a way that is intended by God. So we'll move into our first form of discrimination, which is discrimination based on social class. Um, God has the value, or God's values are not being promoted to help liberate those who are being oppressed by speech, to have compassion for those are, who are oppressed, and to be impartial and practice humility. So people who are in lower classes are often viewed as delinquent or not as clean or less capable. People in the upper classes tend to be viewed as materialistic and selfish. So as you heard in the intro, this can affect where somebody dies, this can affect the economy in the area, solely based on the type of people who live nearby. In the Bible, in Proverbs 10.22, we read, The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. This shows that there's a different type of rich in the Bible. Rich can be viewed as a rich richness in blessings, rather than a richness in items. Also, we look at two key figures in the Bible, Mary and Joseph. Both Mary and Joseph came from a very lowly home. They were both poor, and they both gave birth to the man who washed us all of our sins. Then, in James 2, 1 through 9, um, we learn to love our neighbors as if they were ourselves. So, moving on to our second one, which is ethnicity. There was an experiment done by a man named Vitra, where he put children in a classroom, half of them in blue shirts and half of them in red shirts. They didn't draw any attention to the fact that they were wearing different shirts, but over time, the children started associating more with individuals of their own colored t-shirts. This is because children tend to associate the good qualities in themselves with people who look and act like them. So some examples in the Bible of um, ethnicity not mattering would be in Matthew 15, 22 through 35, where a Canaanite woman asks God for help, and he grants her that help because she's a rich faith. Also, in Acts 10, 34-35, where Peter tells us that all who fear God are loved and accepted regardless of where they're from. Also, in 1 Samuel 16, 7, the Lord tells Samuel to look past appearance and that justice and mercy are more important than judgment. And finally, in Leviticus 10, 33-34, he reminds the Israelites that they were all once considered an opposed nationality. So, we can move on to our final part of discrimination, which is gender discrimination, also known as sexism. 
Um, basically, God's values of impartiality, justice, humility, and peace are all defied by being sexist. Um, as you see in the introduction, the man speaking to the young woman was viewed a little cautiously because he was a man speaking to a woman who didn't seem too interested. Had the roles been reversed, and a woman would have been speaking to a gentleman who didn't seem interested, most people wouldn't turn an eye at that. So if we look into it, um, men can sometimes be seen as the more dominant sex. They can be seen as uh, predators often, whereas women can be viewed as weak and are more designed to hold a certain appearance and you know, live with matters of the home. So if we look at the Bible in Luke 24, 8 through 11, where the apostles doubt Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mother Mary of James about Jesus' rising. In these days, women were not considered as uh, important, where they basically didn't listen to what they said quite as much. Yet they spoke the truth, and they came, and they were the first ones to tell that Jesus had risen. In 1 Corinthians 11, 12, we read, For as a man was made for man, so man is now born of a woman, and all things are from God. This shows that God created men and women. He did not create um, men and women. We were all designed with different gender roles, but we were not created to judge the others. Also, in 1 Peter 3, 3-4, through 4, it is explained that God values a woman's spirit over her outward appearance or the social norm that is expected of women. Basically, that her heart is more important than how she dresses or how she looks. So, to be more godlike and loving, we need to use knowledge and understanding. We need to know that we were all created by the same God and all saved by Jesus, regardless of our differences. To help children, we can actively teach them about differences, and we can actively teach them on how to unite through these differences. For those we meet in our lives who discriminate or who are discriminated against, the best thing we can do is we can pray for them. So, in closing, we'll read one final piece of scripture, and this is Galatians 3.28, which says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Thank you.